Hokey dokey. In this problem, we are being asked to evaluate the definite integral in 316f and 316g. Keep in mind, we will be using u substitution every time. So that's why they look a little crazy. But the idea is to rewrite this integral uh, that is currently in terms of t's and dt's. We will rewrite it in terms of u and du. So let's get started. We first want to identify what our u is. Generally, u is what's inside parentheses being acted upon by some other piece, and that is the squared in this case. So usually we can find it in parentheses, and as other you know, exceptions to that pop up, we can discuss them. So u is 3t cubed plus 6, so we want to find du next, the derivative of u. So taking the derivative, 3 times 3 is 9, keep the t, subtract 1 from the exponent. So altogether we have 9t squared, and then 6 goes to 0 since it's a constant. We often mentioned before tacking on a dt to the du term, so we will do that here. Then, as a nice habit, let's solve for dt, get dt by itself on this right side of this equation. So rewriting this equation we have du over 9t squared equals dt. All right. So now, what we want to do is rewrite the integral. So we will rewrite this integral here in terms of u's and du. So we will keep this t term for the time being. We will plug in the u into the 3t cubed plus 6, and that is being squared in the original integral. And then dt up here, we are replacing with du over 9t squared. So now at this point, if we still have t terms, which we do, they should cancel out nicely and leave us with just u's and du's. So we have a t squared divided by a t squared, essentially. So we're just left with u's and du's and then the uh, constants 15 divided by 9. So usually we want to gather those towards the front. So 15 over 9, u squared du. And now we have our integral in terms of u's and du's, much simpler than the t and dt integral. So now we find the antiderivative. Keep the 15 over 9. Something to mention about the 15 over 9, the constants, you could also, you know, factor them out or sort of like just bring them outside the integral to make the focus the u squared of the integral. So we're not tacking on like 15 over 9 t or 15 over 9 u because it's already the coefficient for the u squared term. So we just have 15 over 9 and then we take the antiderivative of u squared. So we add 1 to the exponent and then divide by whatever that new exponent is. So we have this. If we want, we can multiply the nine and the three to get 27 to sort of just make that our new um, coefficient and then with u cubed. Now, we want to substitute the u back in. So we have something cubed, u cubed, but u was 3t cubed plus 6. All right, so now this is our antiderivative in terms of t. So now we evaluate this. I didn't leave myself much room here. Let's see if I can drag this down. Let's copy it. So we want to evaluate this from 1 to 2. We can't plug in the 1 and the 2 until we plug back in what u represented, right? We need everything back in terms of t because the 1s and 2s are in terms of t. So let's give it a go. We want to plug in the 2 first. So I'll write it out once, and then for the following problems, I will just plug them quickly into Desmos to save time. But this, I'll kind of demonstrate what we are doing all together. So we're taking all of this, plugged in the 2, uh, and then cubing it. And then we will, I'll just go ahead and close that off, I guess. And then minus 15 
over 27 times what we get when we plug in the 1. So we have 3 times 1 cubed plus 6, all cubed, and then closed off. All right, so this, we're evaluating the 2, evaluate the 1, and then subtracting them. So let's open up Desmos and do just that. All right, so starting with this first one, we have 15 over 27. All being multiplied by double parentheses, we'll do 3, and then another parentheses, times 2 raised to the third. We'll close that off, and then plus a 6, and close that off, and then raise that to the third, and then close that off. That is the 2 evaluation. From that, we want to subtract the 1 evaluation. So minus 15 over 27 multiplied by, we have double parentheses, 3 parentheses, 1 cubed, parentheses, plus 6, parentheses, cubed, and parentheses. So we have 14,595. 14,000 595. Let's see if we have an answer. 14,595 on the dot. Breaking out the eraser, we see that D is our answer. All right, let's see how fast we can do these ones. Oh, this one is a great example. So, in this case, the question is how do we pick our U? Like in other examples where we might have rewritten cosine squared as cosine of 6t all squared, we want to do that same thing here. I don't know if that looks familiar or not, or if this is brand new to you, but whenever we see cosine squared, I highly recommend rewriting it like this because it helps us see inside versus outside layers. And so because the sine of 6t is kind of just floating on its own, it's not being raised to any exponent, that means that the cosine of 60 is our inside piece because it's in parentheses, obviously, because we put it there, but it's being acted on by some extra piece, and the sine is not. So cosine of 60 will be our u, which means du is the derivative of cosine. Cosine has a derivative of negative sine, and we keep 6t the same on the inside. This is the derivative of the outside layer. The inside layer is 6t, so we need to multiply what we have by the derivative of the inside layer, and that is 6. So altogether, for du, we have negative sine of 6t times 6. So what I might do is bring that 6 to the front. So instead of negative sine, we have negative 6 sine of 6t, and then Again, we always tack on dt. So then we solve for dt. So get dt by itself by just dividing by the whole derivative we just found. So du over negative sine of 6t equals dt. So now let's make some substitutions. Let's see if we can rewrite this integral to be much nicer. So I wonder if I can white out some of the space to utilize this space here. Uh, let's get rid of that too, why not? Alright, so now we're rewriting the original integral from 1 to 3. We can keep the 162, we can keep the sine of 6t for the time being. And then it's the cosine squared, or the cosine of 6t that is being squared. And cosine of 16, 6t is our u. So we have not cosine of 6t squared, but u squared next and then the dt can't forget about the dt so dt is all of this so we sub in du over negative 6 sine of 6t all right now let's watch what happens we still have t terms where do we have t terms we have t terms with the sine of 6t but sine of 6t is being divided essentially by sine of 6t there's a sine up top sine on the bottom as long as we've done everything right, they will go away. So we've eliminated all t terms. We have everything in terms of u's, 
and du, so we gather the coefficients and bring them out in front. So we have 162 over negative 6. Oh, goodness. Oh, boy, extra fun here. Let's keep the party going. There we go. All right, so negative 6, 162 over negative 6. Let's go ahead and calculate that. That probably reduces. So, oh, 27. Wow, never seen that calculation in my life. So 162 divided by negative 6 is negative 27, apparently. Learn something new. 1 to 3. So I've pulled the negative 27 on the outside. It just helps clear things up. And then what's left on the inside? We've already gathered the numbers, and then it's just u squared du. Isn't that crazy? So the whole integral in terms of t's looks like this, and then you simplify it and it looks like this. That's pretty crazy. All right, so we take the antiderivative. We leave the negative 27. We add one to the exponent, divide by that number, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take negative 27 divided by three. We can sort of combine these, right? Negative 27 over three is negative nine. So we have negative nine u cubed as our antiderivative. So let's plug in u, negative nine u cubed. So we have u was cosine of six t, and now it's being cubed. All right, so now we evaluate this from one to three. So like I mentioned before, I would just jump straight into Desmos, plugging this in. We plug in the three first. So we'll do negative nine in parentheses, cosine six times three. And then all of that cosine is being cubed. And that's the three evaluation. And then we do minus in parentheses, negative 9, we still keep that negative, minus a negative, eventually we'll make that positive, right? Uh, so then negative 9, parentheses, cosine of 6t, or 6 times 1. Close that off again, and then cube that cosine value, and then close off that final set of parentheses. So altogether, we have 5.37. 5.38 maybe, 5.38 or 5.4, so it looks like option C, oh, I blocked that off, here we go, there we go, all right, so it looks like option C is our answer once we break out the eraser, all right. Long video, but let's go and do one more example because this one is not as complicated, complex, complicated, um, but it's still a good one. So let's identify our U. Our U is on the inside of parentheses being acted on by the cubed. We find DU, the derivative of 2T plus 3, is just 2 because the 3 goes to 0, 2T goes to 2. Tack on DT, solve for DT by dividing by 2. And then we rewrite the integral from 1 to 4, keep the 3, 2t plus 3 is our u, and then that u is being cubed, and then we replace the dt with du over 2. Now, uh, if there were t's here, we would cancel them out, but that's it's kind of a free pass. We've already uh, you know, eliminated all the t's. There's no, no t's to cancel. So we gather the coefficients out in front, 3 over 2, leave the integral from 1 to 4, u cubed du, take the antiderivative, u to the third. If we add an exponent, divide by that exponent, we get this. Uh, so that's the antiderivative. We can multiply the 2 and 4 on the bottom, giving us 8. So we really just have 3 eighths times u to the fourth. Let's rewrite this. Instead of u to the fourth, what was our u? 2t plus 3. So we plug that in, and we have this. Now we evaluate this from, what, 1 to 4? 1 to 4. So I did this a moment ago before this video, and I forgot to raise this to the fourth. So keep, and I got like 5 or something, and all the answers are in the thousands. So... Never forget to, uh, when you make your substitution, keep whatever exponent the u is being raised to. It's very important. 
it will make or break your answer. So uh, plugging in the upper bound first, the 4. So we have 2 times 4 plus a 3. We close that off, and it's being raised to the 4th. Here's That was where I you know messed up in the last one. I didn't raise it to the 4th. So now we plug in the 1. 2 times 1 plus 3. Close that off, raise that to the 4th. And now we have the evaluation at 4 minus the evaluation at 1, and we get 52, 56. 52, 56 looks like option B. And we break out the eraser to see that 52, 56 is our answer. If you have any questions on any crazy U substitutions, on picking your U, how to pick your U, um, just let me know. I hope this helps, though. All right.